when you have devices on the network, they can either learn their network information, like their IP addresses, subnet mask, default gateway. They can learn that either statically or dynamically. So statically is just going onto the machine and manually putting in that information, right? Or it can learn it automatically. So statically, that's okay. It'll work out if you have like 10 computers, you can go to each one and you know, if it lost its IP address, you just go up to it and you can configure that IP address and everything like that. But if you wanted to have that on like a larger scale, let's say a hundred devices on your network and you don't want to constantly be going to put that information, that's where DHCP comes in. DHCP, that's the protocol that allows you to configure this automatically where when the device comes on the network, it's going to automatically get its network information like its IP address, the subnet mask, default gateway, DNS server, etc. There's many more pieces of network information that DHCP can assign itself. And how that works is in a server client kind of relationship. You, you set up a DHCP server and you give it a scope of IP addresses and a scope of network information to hand out IP addresses and the subnet mask, uh, the default gateway, and you can configure it to hand out DNS server. And like I said, just, just a whole bunch of other kind of network information it's really up to you as the administrator or the network engineer in this video that's what i got set up for y'all today is just a lab that i'll be sharing just a walkthrough just really basic going to try to keep it clear and very concise just setting up a dhcp server and packet tracer on some cisco router and then we're going to set up a pc in packet tracer as the client and it's gonna get the information that way um, automatically to where we don't have to statically put it in there. And I'll show you both ways just so that you know the difference and the concept can kind of really sink in. If you're feeling this week's video topic and the content and everything, make sure to subscribe. You know it helps out the channel a lot. All right, so now we're in the Packet Tracer lab, right? And this is that super lab. And this is just one of the tasks. I told you this lab has many different labs in it that's why it's a super lab it's got acls it's got nat it's got stp it's got everything in there but back to the lab again we're going to be dealing right here in this specific area of the lab as you can see there's other areas of the lab but i'm just going to be working off of this router and we got some pcs right here so as you can see as you can see this pc already has an ip address this PC doesn't have an IP address. So this is going to be our DHCP client. I already went through this lab and configured this as a client and this is the server. So now I'm going to walk y'all through configuring this router again as the DHCP server for this client because this client is on a different VLAN. Once you get the lab, you'll see that you got to set up VLANs and everything on this just to make this part work. That's a whole nother video if y'all get stuck on that drop it in the comments i'll show a video of how i did all of that but it's good practice that's that's what it's all about you i'm gonna let y'all figure that part out right but again i'm here to help just email me or whatever we can get a session going you know how it goes but uh let's jump into this router right now all right so now that we're in the router the very first thing with dhcp since dhcp is going to be handing out stuff automatically like your ip addresses it's a best practice that you're going to want to exclude some addresses from what you'll be handing out. And that's going to be the first step of the packet tracer lab. Let me pull that up for you real quick. Let me bring it over here. All right. So boom, if you're following along, we're doing task 10 configure DHCP and we got four steps here. Step one, two, three, and four. And the first step is to configure DHCP pools for each VLAN. Let me show you this real quick. This PC is on VLAN 20, this one's on VLAN 30, and this one's on VLAN 10. I've already, like I said, I've configured this guy. He's on VLAN 30. So now I'm just gonna, that's what this lab is doing, is just making me just get practice, right? And just iterate that same config that I did for VLAN 30. I gotta do it for VLAN 20, I gotta do it for VLAN 10. So I'm going to exclude the IP addresses, the first 10. That's what this is telling me. Exclude the first 10 IP addresses in each pool for the VLAN that I'm configuring. So if we scroll up here and we look at VLAN 20, which is right here, VLAN 20, 
you got it as 10 dot x where x is the router numbers they got router one two and three or whatever let me show you that so see b1 and then b2 b3 those are your routers right so again we go right here and vlan 20 has a subnet of 10.1.20.0 slash 24 so what the directions here are saying is step one scroll back down to the task right it says exclude the first 10 ip addresses this is how we're going to do that so we're going to click on the router that we're going to do this on open it up and enable mode and then we're going to go into config mode conf t right and then we're going to do ip dhcp excluded address and excluded addresses this means this is telling this router do not hand out these addresses so the range of addresses are the first 10 that's what we want to exclude so it's 10.1.20.1 and then if we use our help it's going to say oh, what's the highest ip address after this dot one in this range what's the highest ip address i can hand that i sorry that i cannot hand out and then what like we said 10 right so 10.1.20 dot 10 hopefully all of this is making sense if it is definitely go ahead and tap that like button for your boy and definitely subscribe to the channel because i'm i'm giving out all this free game all the time as much as you want it all right so boom that we excluded the first 10 ip addresses let's swing back over to the next step that we need to do it says exclude the first 24 ip addresses in each pool for the wireless lands not finna do that Y'all go ahead and do that. If y'all need help, drop it in the comments. Let me know. The next part of configuring a DHCP server on the router is configuring the pool. It says you have to configure the pool name to be this specific pool name where X is the router number, like router one, two, or three, and VLAN pound pound sign or whatever is the VLAN number. Since we're working with VLAN 20, it's gonna be B1, underscore vlan 20 hopefully that's making sense so let's go ahead and do that so we already excluded the address we, that doesn't do nothing but tell this router not to hand out these ip addresses via dhcp now we're going to do ip dhcp pool and then i'll show the context sensitive help what do you want to name this the instructions specifically say name it b and since we're router one router one if we was router two we would do router two right and they're gonna make you do this for all the routers again just getting that get muscle memory getting that practicing getting your reps in so just get used to doing it underscore vlan and then what vlan number 20. all right so boom now we got the pool set up for it now let's look at the next it says to include the dns server attached to the hq server farm as part of the dhcp configuration I don't need to do that because we're not going to be, I'm not really showing that as far as like the DNS server services. I'm really just showcasing the, or trying to share with y'all the DHCP configuration where it obtains the IP address information automatically. So we'll just skip that DNS server part. You can look that up. That'll be your homework. You know what I'm saying? You figure that out. You figure all of that out once you get the lab and everything like that. Or if you're working through your own lab, just make up a DNS server. If you're not following along with the super lab, this is still configuring DHCP on a Cisco router. So this is part of the requirement if you have a server on your a DNS server on your network. But once we're in the pool, we hit enter. So from here, we have a list of options here. So like I said, DHCP can hand out IP addresses, subnet masks, default gateways, which is default router. That's a default gateway. And then DNS server. That's what the instructions want us to configure. But again, what we're gonna be sticking to just for this video, right, is the network number and mask. So this is gonna be the pool of addresses or the range of network IP addresses and their subnet mass that I'm going to be able to assign to this 10.1.20.0 network. So to do that, that's what you're going to enter in network 10.1.20.0 because that's the network address. And then you put the subnet mass. And if you need help, 
it'll, it'll just use that question mark. You can question mark your way through. Ain't no shame in doing that, right? So network 10.1.20.0 with 3255s, that's a slash 24 network. Now we have a network range set up 10.1.20.0 slash 24 network. So it's gonna be able to hand out a pool of IP addresses, but remember, it's not gonna be able to hand out the first 10 because we specifically told it not to, we told it to exclude those addresses. Now, if you want to configure a default gateway, like I said, you're gonna put default dash router. This is a way to put the default gateway on there. And the default gateway for this network is gonna be 10.1.20.1. And that's the IP address that's configured for this router. This will be the default gateway for VLAN 20. And let me show you that. If I do an IP in brief, as you can see, 10.1.20.1 is right here. That's the IP address. These are the other VLANs. This is what you'll be configuring. I'm not gonna sit here and configure each of these and show you how I configured all of that. That's something that you can go through and learn on your own, right? And if you need help again, just reach out to me. I got you. All right. So now we got a network range set up. We got the addresses that we excluded, especially this one, the default gateway IP address. You see that there? And then we also assigned it a default gateway for the client. For when DHCP hands out the IP address and subnet mask, it's gonna hand it out from this pool of IP addresses with that subnet mask, and it's gonna give them this default gateway. We could also, again, we could also configure a DNS server, but I'm not trying to do that for the video. Again, I'm already been rambling, and I'm trying to keep it short and sweet as much as possible. So that's pretty much it. After you do that, just hit N, right, and save that config. Next step. All right, so for step number two, configure the PCs to use DHCP. Currently, the PCs are configured to use static IP addresses. Change this configuration to DHCP. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So, like I said, at the beginning of this video, you can either configure these PCs statically or dynamically. If you click on the interface, it's set to static. So I can manually go in here and put 10.1.20.52 and then put in 255.0. Right? But if I, that's cool if I had just three PCs on my network, but if I have a hundred, I don't want to do that. So what am I going to do? Set it to obtain it automatically. Right? And as soon as I did that, you could already see the client has grabbed the IP address automatically from that pool of IP addresses. 10.1.20.0 from that network. It's got a IP address of 10.1.20.11 with the network mask. And that happened because of DHCP because we configured that pool correctly on the router as a DHCP server. And if we go one step further and we log in here, right? And we go to the command prompt and we do an IP config forward slash all, we could see that not only did it obtain the IP address information, it attained the default gateway that we set for it as 10.1.20.1. It also got a DNS server because when I was doing the lab behind the scenes, I configured that DNS server command under there and that's how I got assigned that. But again, that's another lab for another day. All right, so that was it. We configured DHCP server on the router for one subnet, VLAN 20. And then we configure DHCP client on a PC and packet tracer just by simply clicking that radio button in the interface settings for that client in the PC. If you have to run through the video again, but basically it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Hopefully it all made sense. Um, if it did, again, please go ahead and smash that. Subscribe to the channel, share this with anybody that's trying to learn it. And then if it didn't make sense, drop in the comments where it didn't make sense and I'll try to get back to you as much as possible or shoot me an email. Again, the email address is in the bio. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. I see y'all subscribing to the channel. I definitely see y'all. I appreciate that. Super grateful for the support because y'all keep turning me up. Go ahead and turn me up. Make sure y'all get me in them algorithms. I appreciate that. And turn on them notification bells so you catch that next video. And y'all let me know in the comments if there's something else that you want to see. You already know how it goes. Holla at your ninja. Peace.